to learn more on how JTA has been adjusting to this emergency and the toll it's taking on the authority as a whole, I sat down today with CEO Nat Ford. Let's start with the obvious. How are you and your family making do through this, uh, this critical time? Well, we're holding up. Uh, it is a challenging time. You know, uh, a lot of my family is in New York, which uh, has become a hotbed of the uh, pandemic. Uh, but uh, I'm happy to say, God bless, we're uh, all doing fine and healthy. Tell me about just kind of keeping in contact with with your leadership team and, and the staff in, in this kind of situation? You know, we were very fortunate because uh, we began the deployment of uh, WebEx, Cisco WebEx systems, and we started practicing using those systems well before the pandemic to bring our organization closer together. And so we've been able to have our regular routine of incident management meetings uh, on a daily basis with the executive team. Uh, then we have our regular staff meetings, and uh, we've been able to function very well operating remotely using a technology. A global pandemic is not something you can really anticipate. Right. I mean, you, you can prepare for hurricanes, you know those are gonna happen. Exactly. Um, so give me an assessment on how the authority is doing at this point. You know, uh, we get a lot of practice from those hurricanes, uh, the seasonal uh, weather con uh, issues that we have to deal with. Uh, this is much more, you know, longer in duration. And so uh, from an operational standpoint, we're doing very well. And I think it's a, a testament to the staff here, the operators, the maintenance personnel, our customer service personnel, and the infrastructure that we've built here at the JTA that we've been able to function, uh, I would say, rather well. Uh, we are carrying about 13,000 people on average on a weekday. Uh, we did see a significant drop in terms of ridership, but we've been serving our passengers well. On-time performance is uh, uh, just as strong as it was prior to the pandemic, and uh, uh, we're just uh, greatly anticipating when this will be over. I want to talk about uh, not a new partnership, but a unique partnership that uh, the JTA has developed over the last several months, but it really came to head here um, during this crisis, and that's with the Mayo Clinic. Yes, yes. You have a situation where literally right in the middle of this crisis, um, the, you partnered with, with not only Mayo, but Beep and Navia to, to come up with a, a solution on how to expedite this coronavirus testing. Tell me how that all came about. You know, uh, it, it's exciting for us as the JTA, and I think it's part of the spirit of our organization, which is we see ourselves as being part of uh, the problem solvers of this overall community. And uh, as this healthcare uh, pandemic uh, faced our community, uh, our work that we have been doing with Mayo previous to the pandemic uh, we were able to expedite that co cooperation, that partnership, to deliver uh, COVID-19 specimens from their drive-up uh, testing facility, taking those, uh, those specimens and using the autonomous vehicle and all the knowledge we've learned over the past three years to actually transport without uh, operator, transport those specimens to their laboratory. That frees up the medical, the healthcare professionals, frees them up to focus on patients and, leave, and leave a lot of the transportation to us in terms of transfer, transporting those specimens. So we're very excited about that partnership. Didn't start overnight. You know, we had been working with Mayo along with some other facilities to start advancing autonomous vehicle technology here in Jacksonville. How do you leverage what you've, you know, doing now during this pandemic with Mayo to, to future projects. Exactly, out of a crisis like this, you know, it's those organizations that learn and they get creative and find different ways of doing business uh, that will succeed and that will survive uh, this uh, unfortunate uh, outcome or turn of events. And so uh, we have learned a lot uh, in terms of just the healthcare and safety for our customers and healthcare and safety for our, our employees. And so those lessons that we've learned, we will be deploying them as we go forward. It's a new normal and uh, we need to be prepared for it. But uh, as we stand today, the JTA I think is doing exceptionally well in the face of it. Let's talk about your frontline employees, the right. bus operators and the mechanics and the, mm -hmm. and the transit supervisors. They, they've done a remarkable job kind of handling things and keeping the city moving. Talk about them for a minute. You know, I can't stop talking about them because I think uh, for the 13,000 people that we're carrying on a daily basis, those are individuals that frankly, they are supporting our hospitals, they are supporting the grocery stores, uh, and they're making sure that many of us can stay at home uh, with, the, uh, with the work that they're doing. 
our operators, our maintenance employees, our operations, customer service uh, uh, staff, they've done a fantastic job. They've given and they've sacrificed. I also you know, want to take a moment to thank all of the healthcare professionals, uh, the doctors, the nurses, as well as you know, our firefighters and police officers. You know, our bus operators, the maintenance staff, they're all in that, that family of people who are sacrificing to ensure that the rest of us can ma re maintain our safety and uh, a good state of health. Our uh, community as a whole has been suffering economically and JTA is not immune to that. I mean, if right. people aren't buying gas, there's no gas tax revenue, sales tax revenue. That's right. And, um, and you know, not as many people, you know, riding, so the, that hits, hits you at the fare box. How can you overcome that? You know, so I think the, the strategy for the JTA going forward, working with our board of directors to provide us policy guidance, is to examine how we can strategically contain our costs. We do need to move our customers. We do have a number of construction projects that need to move forward. And we, I feel confident that we can continue to do that. But we do have to make smart decisions in terms of our funding and how we spend these limited dollars that we will be receiving until the economy turns back around. Let's talk about kind of where we are right now in the, in the Jacksonville Regional Transportation Center. Yes. We haven't really got to spend a lot of time here because of this virus. Um, what's it feel like being in this building, knowing it's ready, and yet um, you, you haven't, no one's really got to explore it yet, no one's really got to use it yet. Mm -hmm. um, talk, talk about that for, both for, from an employee standpoint and also you know, our customers haven't, haven't really enjoyed it yet. Yes, well, yeah, we've made a decision that we will do a much smaller opening of JRTC, the operational uh, bus operation portion of this facility. We will continue to have our non-essential uh, employees, our administrative employees work from home until such time that the pandemic is fully cleared and we feel it's safe for them to come and occupy this building. But our transit operation will move forward and uh, they will be relocating from Rosa Parks here to this facility. This facility has, from a technology and safety uh, uh, perspective, is a much safer facility. It's a much more efficient facility and it has all of the latest technology to make sure our customers have a safe uh, and uh, customer focused experience. I'd like to add one more thing. In terms of the JRTC, we didn't build it just for today. We built it for decades uh, to come. And so this facility will be here for the next 50 to 100 years and uh, the citizens of this community will get more uh, benefit. They'll get their full benefit of its uh, construction uh, going into the future. It's easy to be disappointed because you didn't have that, oh, that yeah. big, that big grand opening. But with everything that's going on, you know, you got you have to keep things in perspective. Exactly. Right? It's more, it's more important for us to focus on social distancing uh, and following the protocols laid out by the federal government and the state and our and our mayor. Uh, we're going to follow those protocols to ensure that everyone's safe. But at the same time, I, I'm going to reiterate, you know, this facility is going to be here for, for quite some, for generations to come. And uh, there'll be a, the appropriate time for us to cut the ribbon and have a celebration for its opening. Do you have a, a favorite aspect of the, of the building and, in, in, you know, either inside or outside yet? Uh, you know, in terms of the building, I think just the location of it. I think the location on the west side of uh, downtown Jacksonville, adjacent to the Prime Osborne, uh, I think it couldn't be a more, and uh, right, you know, I'm looking right over your shoulder at I-95, it couldn't be located in a better location uh, in terms of transportation and the connectivity that we need in our community. So the location is just, the, I think, the, the prime location for the JRTC. And while this was going up, there's been a lot of things going up around it exactly. because, it, you know, because of this building. You know, you have the new lofts and there's more townhouses to come and, you know, there's other development just, you know, coming on uh, line maybe in a, you know, about a block away. So, I mean, this really will be a hopping area. Exactly. It, it, and uh, again, it goes back to location. I think in a real estate world, it's location, location, location. And the JTA, along with the city, uh, we have uh, parcels in and around the JRTC that are available for development. And uh, I'm excited about the future of La Villa and uh, for the JTA to have a hand in its revitalization. It was a, a bustling community at one point fell on hard times and look, uh, it's right about uh, time for its resurrection. And so we're happy to be part of the anchor, a part of the foundation that uh, built, uh, created that resurrection. Talk to our viewers about what they can expect 
um, after this crisis is gone yes. and look into the future about what are some of the exciting things that, that, that's coming from JT? Yeah, so, you know, uh, we are working on that right now. We have identified a number of projects that are ready to, uh, you know, shovel ready to move forward uh, in terms of our road program. Uh, Alta Drive, for example, San Pablo Road. So we have a number of road projects that uh, we need to break ground and get them moving. Uh, Kernan Boulevard is wrapping up, so you know now we're moving from Kernan to, road, uh, to San Pablo and uh, Alta Drive. Uh, I would say the work that we need to do in and around the ferry. Uh, there's another ferry grant that we received earlier this year that will help us with uh, revitalizing and upgrading the ferry facility. And then First Coast Flyer, the uh, what's going to be called the Orange Line. Uh, we need to begin construction on the Orange Line that will take us to our Orange Park Mall and connect to this facility right here, along with uh, more autonomous vehicles and the U2C program, the Bay Street Innovation Corridor. Uh, we've got our hands full. And so uh, the sooner we get through uh, this pandemic, the quicker we can get back to our uh, construction, uh, uh, construction activities. And so it's an exciting time. Uh, we just have a little decline here, but uh, the future is bright. Sounds exciting. Can't wait for it. Oh, yes, it is. Thanks for taking some time for us today. Thank you, Bill.